Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for this day that we can be together to celebrate with Liam and Ethan as they take this new step in their lives. Bless us with your presence and your grace as we remember who we are as your children, loved unconditionally and transformed by your spirit of new life. May we all experience the joy of your presence with us today. Amen. Hey.
Good morning again, everyone. No, that doesn't that doesn't cut it. I'm sorry. Don't say it to me. Say good morning to someone else instead. There we go. Say good morning to someone. Isn't this a great church? Hay and poison ivy and the sun. And the wind. This is God's church, and I'm excited to be here. We have a lot of exciting stuff this morning, but to kick it off, uh, we have a we have a number of grade eight grads um, that we have had such a joy of spending time with over the last number of years, and we want to celebrate them this morning. So, if we can get our uh, junior youth leaders up here and our um, we have two grads with us this morning. We have a few others who couldn't make it. Uh, we have some stuff for you. And here, here's where all of you come in. Um, you get to cheer them on. It has been a joy to spend the last three years with um, all of our junior youth who are graduating. Um, Leif and Grady, you're wonderful. And we just wanted to share some thoughts with you um, as we send you on to high school. Leif. We are so glad you've been part of junior youth for the last three years. You are curious, always willing to try something new, and to tell us about the things you've learned. Thank you for sharing the ways you see the world and for asking questions that help us all stretch our minds and hearts. As you head into high school, we hope you're surrounded by people who encourage your love of learning and help you grow in faith. Look out, basketballs, badminton, birdies, and science labs. Leif is ready to take on the world. With love from your junior leaders. Grady, you've brought so much joy and kindness to our junior youth group for the past 3.14159 years. <laughs> We see how you love to ask thoughtful questions, encourage people, and connect with friends. It's amazing to see how you find patterns in the world around you. We hope you'll always be able to see the rhythm of God working in your life. The way you are sure of who you are, but willing to keep discovering new ideas and opportunities will help you get the most out of your high school years. Thank you for making us smile with your amazing sense of humor and great big heart. Love your junior leaders. We have some grade 12 grads to celebrate as well. Come on up, guys. We have uh, Liam, Sam, Elias, and Ethan. Uh, and we've, again, we've had such a pleasure of spending uh, years with them. I, I've been here three years. Youth leaders have been here longer. Uh, and they are... Um, ready to take on some new challenges. And so we wanted to celebrate them and um, equally as important, remind you guys that uh, you've got a big cheering section. There's a lot of people here that are supporting you, are caring for you, are cheering you on, and we can't, uh, we can't wait to hear uh, all that you accomplish in these coming years. And so uh, we have some gifts for you and some cards. I'll let Cyril say something, and then I think we should pray for our grade 8 and our grade 12 grads together. Not much to say. I think just to mention, uh, there's something I can tell you about these kids is uh, you might think that we're probably the ones having more impact in their lives. Uh, just spend time with them, and then you will be transformed. So it's been just a blessing to be around these guys. And uh, I know they have so much to offer to the world. Whoever is missing the impact of these, you're missing something. And boys, go get it. I'm always going to be, you know, behind you guys cheering for you. So you guys are awesome. You are. A loving creator, you are, um, <clears throat> uh, you are full of life. And who is more full of life than our teens? Uh, and our, our kids and our young people. Uh, your image is so uh, profoundly connected to the, who they are. They are uh, world changers. They are full of joy and life and energy. And we thank you for them. 
Thank you for these grade eight grads, for our grade 12 grads. Thank you for this community that loves and supports them. And we are excited to journey with them as they accomplish great things. Thank you for who they are in your name. Amen. This is an exciting morning. Baptism services are my favorite Sundays, and I'll tell you why. For Christians, baptism represents the most important decision we can make in life. That's a pretty bold claim. There's some pretty big decisions we make in life, right? This is actually something that I have researched and studied quite a bit. I'm fascinated with human beings and the decisions that we make in life. So I've studied this, and I'm going to present to you what, what I've concluded are the five most important decisions we make in life. Would you be curious about that? I heard a lot of yeses, so I'll continue, and I'll share. Now, young people, when, you know, in high school, you're thinking the biggest decision you're going to make in your life is your career path, right? What you're going to study at university. What, it's not even in the top ten. You know, m many of you will experience many different career shifts in your path. Probably more than ever with AI and everything that's going on. So good luck with preparing for your future career. Uh, I think Stephen has all the answers that you need in doing that. Is that correct, Stephen? Yeah. That was... Where is he? There he is. He's already passing on the wisdom, whispering behind them. But I'm going to share with you the top five decisions we make in life. Number five is this, who you let into your inner circle. Incredibly important. Who you let in to be your confident, your confidants in life, who you're vulnerable with, who, who you let influence you the most. That's the fifth most important decision. Number four, are you committed to being yourself? Your authentic self. You know how many people spend most of their lives trying to find happiness and success and peace and, and fit in by trying to be someone else? One of the most important decisions you can make is just to be yourself, your authentic self. Number three. Now, Tony Robbins says this is the most important, but I've ranked it at number three. So you can take that for what it's worth. He says this. Are you committed to living in a beautiful state even when things don't go your way? A lot of life is about stuff not going our way. We can choose to enter a beautiful state, a state that, that is grounded in peace and joy and positivity and optimism and hope. That's one of the most important, the third most important decision you can make is being committed to living in a beautiful state even when things don't go your way. Number two, who you choose is your life partner your spouse and if you choose not to get married then that question would be how will you find intimacy companionship and community in your life without a life partner a spouse i'm telling you that is a that is a big one that's a big one i now i i've made a lot of questionable decisions in my life uh, i'm not going to share them with you uh but i have but one that i think i really you know hit a home run is who i chose in a life partner that's right that's right this is this is this is uh not manipulative at all in me scoring brownie points there's nothing like that going on here at all i'm just laying truth on you and i will tell you who you choose as your life partner far more important than when you, you what university you go to or what career path you take but the number one most important decision we make in life is this Will you let God, the creator of the universe, be God in your life? So in one sense, philosophically speaking, there are no atheists. We all have a God. We all have something that is supreme in our life. Uh, you know, the theologian Paul Tillich says, your God is whatever your ultimate concern is, whatever the ultimate authority, whatever is reigns supreme in your life, that is your God. So you can choose yourself to be your God, or your desires, or your goals, or you can choose uh, uh, your spouse, or your children, or family can be your God, or it can be, you know, it can be a number of things, money, or sex, it can be, it can be community, religion, 
there's so many things that we can choose to be our God. The most important decision we can make in life is to let God, the creator of the universe, be God in our lives. And that's what baptism is about. It's choosing to let God, the creator of the universe, be God in our lives. And this morning, Ethan and Liam are choosing to be baptized to be baptized and baptism represents this choice to let God be God in our lives now it's more than that it's also choosing to accept God's forgiveness and to live in God's grace which makes it so much easier to do what Tony Robbins was talking about live in a beautiful state even when things don't go our way but it's more than that it's also choosing to pursue a relationship with our creator it's not just that that God is the ultimate authority in our lives. God is also, we can experience friendship with God, with the creator. We can pursue that. And it's also choosing to commit to follow the teachings of Jesus, the way of Jesus, and to open ourselves up to the presence, the living presence and guidance of the spirit of God. That's what baptism is about. Now, that's in my words. Let me read you a passage of scripture from the book of Romans, chapter 6, where the Apostle Paul explains what baptism is about. Now, he's a theologian, and sometimes theologians can be difficult to understand, so I'm going to read it from the, the version of the Bible called The Message that really makes it quite accessible and easy to understand, I think. So here it is, Romans chapter 6. Paul says, this is what happens in baptism. When we go under the water, we leave the old country of sin behind. And when we come up out of the water, we enter into the new country of grace. A new life in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we're lowered into the water, it's like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father, the creator of the universe, so that we can see where we are going in our new grace-filled country. Could it be any clearer, Paul says, our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ. A decisive end to the sin-miserable life we lived. No longer captive to sin's demands now. So what we believe is this, if we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end, of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive, he brings God down to us. So from now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you anymore. God speaks your mother tongue. And you hang on every word. For you are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. I love that. Baptism is a symbol of our death and rebirth in Christ. I mean, both Paul and Jesus use that language. It's very strong language death and rebirth they couldn't really the stakes couldn't really be higher baptism is a symbol of our death and our rebirth now what that means would take many many messages but it's a mystery that we're invited to enter into to not only understand but to actually experience baptism marks the beginning of a new life and i'm excited i'm excited when people choose this way of life because it's different. It's different when we intentionally choose to walk with the creator of the universe as our friend and as our ultimate authority. So baptism is our responsive obedience to the invitation of Christ. It's a public declaration that this is the life I want to live. I want to follow Jesus. I want God to be my God in life. And I want God's spirit to guide me and lead me the rest of my life. I'm going to invite Stephen to come on up and in introduce to you who you already know but he's going to introduce Ethan and Liam to you. This is a, a really exciting day and, and as we get Liam and Ethan to come up here with me um, I want to I want to add a little little bit of context so all year 
Um, as we are meeting with our youth group, as we are having fun events, as, as we're you know, going for food and chatting about life, uh, I often find myself doing a lot of praying about um, June is coming up. I wonder who is feeling that tug from their creator to get baptized. Uh, and, and so I'll pray about it and I'll reflect and I'll be thinking about people and, and trying to figure out where maybe God is challenging me to to approach somebody to push someone to say hey have you thought about this and i think my most favorite part of that process is it's often the people that i feel challenged to approach who end up approaching me uh, clearly god has been tugging on their hearts and has been tugging on my heart and those moments of confirmation i think are really um I mean, it's a powerful reminder of how intimately connected God is to our lives and to our decisions and to our community. And so without getting into the stories, I, I was thinking about Liam, thinking about Ethan, and at separate occasions, both of them approached me and said, hey, I think this is something I want to add to my life. I think this is something that is important to me. And so over the last number of weeks, uh, we have been uh, meeting and chatting, hearing their questions, hearing their thoughts. And as much as I'm very excited to have you hear their thoughts this morning, I really wish you could be a fly on the wall for those conversations, to hear uh, their thought process and their hearts, uh, their, their passion. And uh, more than that, uh, this goes for Liam and Ethan, but also all of our other students, I wish you could be a fly on the wall um, in their lives because they're truly making a difference in our community. Uh, their school is noticing it. Their teams are noticing it. Uh, their friends are noticing it. And, and Liam and Ethan are great examples of being difference makers. Uh, so let's give it up for Ethan and Liam. You guys can come up. We're going to hear why they have decided to get baptized. So I'm getting baptized because I used to feel like something's missing in my life. I want to be closer to God and have church to be a bigger part of my life. Um, I don't really have a lot prepared, but uh, basically in the beginning of my baptism journey, I didn't really know if I wanted to or not. It, I kind of started thinking about it at an event we do called Sold Out, and I did a cold swim in the lake, what, late November? Late November with Stephen, and it was freezing. And I had about seven different people ask me if it was baptism, and I couldn't stop thinking about it after that. I just, I wanted to, I kept thinking about it, and it kind of kept growing, and it started spiral, spiraling, turning into like a bigger thing. And as I was thinking about it more and more, I was participating in the church more. I was... I saw God everywhere, like K-5, to youth, leading worship, all sorts of events, stuff like that. And I kind of, I wanted, I wanted, I was like, this is a pretty cool faith. This is a pretty cool faith. I want to, I want to commit to this. I want to commit to God. And I couldn't think of a better church to get baptized with or a better person to get baptized with. And that's, that's kind of my reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I, I, I want to commit to my faith and my God. Cheering me up a little bit here. Oh my goodness. All right, get it together, Trey. You got some questions to ask. Uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper are our oldest rituals as a church. And baptism is actually the oldest. Jesus himself got baptized, which is really mind blowing to think about. Jesus led the example, getting baptized. And uh, we're following that tradition. For 2,000 years, the church has baptized people who want to follow Jesus and let God be God in their lives. And a part of that tradition is we ask people who want to be baptized uh, specific questions. So as a representative of this community, because it's not Stephen and I are baptizing you, this is a community of love baptizing you into the body of Christ. I'm going to ask you four questions. And uh, if you can respond, I do, that's great. If you respond, I don't, I guess we'll have to consult, uh, have a little huddle over there and decide what we need to do here. Oh, 
<sighs> so, Ethan, Liam, do you choose to be baptized? I, I do. Do you turn away from sin and renounce evil? I, I do. Do you turn to Jesus and his way of life? I, I do. Do you choose to open your life to the Holy Spirit? I do. Excellent. Ah, oh, this is awesome, eh? This is great. Now, like I said, this isn't this isn't just Stephen and I baptizing. This is the community. So I'm going to ask the community to answer a few questions as well, representing your role in this relationship and in this ritual that we're we're performing right now. So what what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you three questions. At the end of those three questions, I'm going to invite you to respond in the affirmative, saying we will. Okay, at the end of the three questions. Here's the first question. Avon Church, friends and family, will you bless Liam and Ethan today and in the years ahead by accepting them as brothers in Christ and supporting them on their journey of faith? Question number two. Will you pray for them and do all you can to help them follow the way of Jesus? Question three. Will you encourage them to discover and use their gifts and become their authentic self in Christ? If so, answer, we will. We will. Amen. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. Ethan and Liam, we give thanks for your presence in our community and your willingness to share your gifts and your energy with us. It's exciting to see you take this step in your lives, and we ask God to shower his blessings upon you both. God, we thank you for your saving presence in Ethan's life and in Liam's life. Be present in the trials and the joys of their lives, and may they always trust your love. Jesus, we thank you for your life, death, and resurrection. Guide Ethan and Liam so that they may always trust your grace. Holy Spirit, sustainer and teacher for your energy moving in and around them, we give thanks. Help us all to trust that you are with each of us every step of our lives and that your will will be fulfilled that you will be faithful amen Ethan I, in front of a community of love we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit of love, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good. 